Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another full day of eating. So here I am this morning, just starting the day outside, feeding the birds, and then I'm gonna try and feed my mind. <laughs> so just a few minutes of meditation, just to get myself into a good headspace for the day, and uh, mainly just to keep myself off social media from checking the news for at least the first few minutes of the day, because it's just so easy to get immersed in all that right away. So I've been finding it really helpful, and uh, you know, no expectations, just a few minutes of breathing. So if you guys are anything like me though, you wonder, is this person really meditating or did they just set up the camera for this shot? And yep, <laughs> I just set up the camera for the shot, but I did meditate earlier. It's really not that calming to meditate when you know the camera's watching you. Anyways, you guys know the deal with these videos. I will show you all the meals that I eat today. So my breakfast, my lunch, and also my dinner with the hopes that it'll give you guys some ideas on different things that you can be cooking at home. And I also like to throw in a little bit of the movement that I do in the day. Usually it's a workout or a run or something like that because after all, the food is just the fuel and it's what we do with that fuel that really matters. So right away in the morning, I always start the day with water. Today I'm starting with warm water. I don't always pour it like this, but the kettle's boiling and the jug water was cold, so I figured if I mixed them both, it would be warm. And it was quite nice. But hey, if you guys want to subscribe and you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We just hit 600,000 on the channel. That's so exciting for me. So thank you guys all for that. Uh, so this is a little pre-workout drink that I like to have. These are beetroot crystals. So similar to beetroot powder, however, to make these, instead of just grinding up the beet, they actually make beet juice and then they dehydrate the juice. So it's great for helping with blood flow, giving you a good pump and good energy in the gym. And that's where we're going right now. Just heading to the gym. And for a little more energy today, I decided to have a little bit of coffee. This is not something I do all the time. You guys know it's a little touchy with me and coffee, but it does help me smash out a good workout. So it was a pull day today, focusing on pulling movements. It means I'm working my back, my biceps, and Crystal is working shoulders here. And look at the gains she's making. She is looking ripped. And she knows it too. But for real though, like look at her delts. <laughs> she's ripped. The lighting is pretty good in this gym, but Crystal has gotten so much stronger lately. It's been amazing to see. So I'm just finishing with some bicep curls. This is on like the bicep curl machine, I guess you'd call it. And then I like to hit free weights after. So curls are awesome to finish a pull day with just because it's like such a good isolation movement. You leave with just such a good pump on your biceps and just feel so good. So here I'm just squeezing the last few out. And look at that, for a dude who's been vegan for over 10 years, getting on to be almost 38 years old. Not too bad, still doesn't know how to flex, but at least I can build a little bit of muscle. All right, let's go home and get some food. So I just got back from the workout, and as you guys probably saw like from the drive there, the weather took a nasty turn. It's so cold, it's so rainy outside, so I definitely don't feel like the usual post-workout smoothie or smoothie bowl that I always have. I want something warming, I want something hot, so I'm gonna make myself some high-protein oatmeal. So this is everything that I'm going to use to start with, at least. So I've got some cinnamon, an apple, banana, a date, and then some organic rolled oats. So if you guys have been following along for a while, you may have noticed I have a bit of a sweet tooth. I do like things sweet. However, I try not to eat too much processed sugar, and especially like in my oatmeal, there's just no need for processed sugar in there, especially when there's so many other ways to make it sweet. So let me show you how I do this naturally with fruit. So you guys may have seen me do this before or on my Instagram, I've been showing you a little bit lately, but what I like to do is to blend up a banana and a date with water, and I find about three cups to be a good amount, and then a teaspoon or so of cinnamon. Well, actually that seems like a lot, maybe half a teaspoon. And then you just blend it up. And then you just use this liquid to cook the oats. It's really simple. So I only like to use about half of this liquid. I like to save the other half to pour on top at the end, but I am gonna do something else with it, which I'll show you in just a sec. So now I'm just chopping up some apple. I'm gonna throw some of this in while it's cooking. And then with the rest of this liquid, I'm just gonna add some protein powder, bump up the protein content of it. No surprises there. Uh, this is vanilla, I find it goes really well with this. 
And I'm also gonna add a scoop of creatine as well. So usually I'll have this in my post-workout smoothie, and uh, I just find if I don't like have it right after my workout, I just like forget to have it. So it's going in here. So I don't know if like everybody likes to have milk with their oatmeal, but uh, this is something that I always did when I was a kid. I don't know if it was because I grew up in like a half English household or whatever. You guys will have to let me know if you have milk in your oats as well. So if you wanted something like high protein to pour onto your oats, but you don't want to use like a protein powder or whatever I just made here, you could always just like blend up some soy milk with some hemp seeds or something like that. Uh, it wouldn't taste quite as good, but you know, it would, it would help. And I've just got a small handful of walnuts that's going on there. So I know you guys know this already, but walnuts are a pretty good source of omega-3, so that's why I'm having them on here today. But not quite as good as like ground flaxseed, chia, or hemp, but definitely still a worthy source of omega-3s. Then I just saved a few pieces of apple just to put on top for a little crunch and color. So I remember I had a few strawberries in the fridge that were definitely not getting any fresher, so I'm gonna eat those with this as well. All right, not like it needs it, but just cause I've got it. <laughs> and this peanut butter is so crazy good. I'm just gonna put a little drizzle of peanut butter on here as well. All right, I'm so hungry. I'm gonna get into these, Let's see how it is. Mmm, so good. Oh my gosh. It's kind of like soup, <laughs> but you know, not salty. So yeah, if you guys are oatmeal lovers and you have never tried cooking your oats this way, definitely try it and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Or if you're on Instagram, tag me at Simnet Nutrition and you guys know I love seeing your creations when they've been inspired by my recipes. Might even repost it. So you guys might have noticed I was using organic oats to make this. And I try and buy as much of our food and our produce organic as possible, you know, especially if it fits our budget and, you know, it's available to us. It not always is. Uh, but oats are one of these things that I try to buy organic 100% of the time. And the reason being is that they consistently come back testing for higher than acceptable levels of pesticides. And, uh, you know, and specifically glyphosate. This is not something that we want to be consuming in high levels. So just a heads up to you guys, you know, they're not usually much more expensive. Um, oats are pretty cheap anyways. Uh, so if you guys, you know, if you have them available to you and you can afford them, I would say try and get organic. I'm going to go sit down and enjoy the rest of my oatmeal, do a little bit of work, and then I will see you guys back in here not too long and we will make some lunch. Should be good. All right, you guys have got to see this masterpiece of a lunch that I just made. So it only took me like less than 15 minutes. I know it's hard to believe, but I'll show you guys how I made it real easy. Look at this, we've even got some cheesy toast in here too. Oh. I'm just gonna start off by throwing some of these frozen organic mixed vegetables into a pot. So a lot of people shy away from frozen veggies. They think they're not gonna be very nutritious or whatever, but that's definitely not the case. They're still extremely nutritious and considering like how convenient they are, I always have them on hand in the freezer. And then I'm just gonna throw in a can of this triple bean chili. So we get this stuff from Costco and it is actually so good. They have textured vegetable protein in here. So that definitely like bumps up the protein content as you can see, cause there's 14 grams in about a cup of this. But if you don't have chili, like I'm always doing this with other foods as well. Uh, sometimes I'll add like lentil soup to, you know, this, which is like a bunch of frozen veggies. And uh, here's another soup we actually picked up recently. That's also very good. So nice to see all these like vegan products hitting shelves, especially ones that should be vegan, like soups like this, and they don't sneak any milk powder or anything crazy in there. And then something else I'm gonna have with this is just a piece of cheesy toast. Oh man, it goes so well with chili. Like, how can I not? So I don't know if you guys use these, but this is like um, this like sort of like wax paper that you use instead of saran wrap. You can use it over and over again and wash it. It's actually really cool. But uh, yeah, it's been keeping my cheese nice and fresh. So this is the cheese that I'll be using. This is applewood smoked vegan cheese. It's so good. It melts so amazingly. You guys will see. This cheese is pretty rich, so I'm trying to make the slices as thin as possible. And then just a little pinch of black pepper on here. Oh man, this is gonna be good. Whoa, okay, I forgot about it. Oh my gosh, I almost burnt it, but I didn't. Look at that, cheese is melting. Let's get it out.
So this is just some arugula, and I'm just making like a little nest, and then I'm gonna put the chili in the middle. It's gonna be awesome. Green onion that I cut up. Oh, I got something for this. Oh man. Oh man. I just remembered that we bought some of this the other day. This queso. I was just looking at it, being like, man, the lettuce is looking a little dry. I need something on there. Boom. So I better try it out while it's still hot. Get a little arugula, a little cheesy sauce, some of the chili. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, this is incredible. This is like one of my absolute favorite things to eat right now. Mm. Oh, the toast. I almost forgot. I don't know if you guys do this, but like use it as like a little, you know, cheesy, grainy spoon. <laughs> Oh, mmm, wow. So that cheese may not rocket your health to the next level, but the flavor, man, it is on another level, let me tell ya. Woo! So I'm gonna go and eat this, chill out for a bit. I've got a little while till dinner. I wanna get outside and do something today, but it is like so nasty and so dark outside. So I don't know, it's gonna take like maximum motivation to get out there, but we'll see. I'll bring you guys along if I do. If not, see you back in here. I'm gonna make some dinner. So I just was feeling a little bit restless, wanted to get in a little bit more movement today. So I just decided to come up for a quick run before dinner and uh, I'm pretty glad that I did, <laughs> you know? I was almost gonna stay home. I was making up all the excuses. I was like, man, it's raining. I'm gonna have to wash my shoes after. But you know what? If you make up those excuses today, you're gonna make them the next day. So let that be your motivation. You guys sitting there thinking about it. As soon as this video's done, get out there, get moving. glad I came out. I actually feel even better than I did before I left for the run. And I was feeling great before I left. So look at that exercise, man. It works wonders. <laughs> so I only did like probably five or six laps of the track. Don't think I'm any like marathon runner over here or anything, but you know, gotta keep them cardio gains up. Anyways, you jet home. I gotta make that dinner. Oh yeah. You always know that it's fall when the geese are going south. Take me with you. <laughs> All right, so I'm back in the kitchen and I've already got some of the dinner started. So what I have over here in this big pot is some pasta. It's actually this like high protein chickpea pasta that I'm making. So I don't know if you guys have caught onto this stuff yet, but it is awesome. And um, you can see here at 100 grams, there's 23 grams of protein. So very high in protein. So I'm gonna be cooking this up and then actually right now it's almost done. And then I'm just gonna add some frozen peas to the pasta and the cooking water and everything. And then when I strain it, the peas will be like nicely cooked. I'm also steaming some cauliflower. So the cauliflower is actually gonna be the base for like this creamy sauce that I'm making to go on the pasta. It's actually gonna be kind of like a garlicky Alfredo type sauce, but it's obviously not gonna be exactly the same. However, I did test this recipe the other day and the sauce is pretty good. And I even wrote down the amounts. So I'm gonna show you guys that with amounts because I know I'm like always so terrible at giving you guys exact recipes, but I'm doing it here today. So let me show you what I put in the sauce. So this recipe is kind of similar to the cheesy sauce that's in my recipe ebook, which there's a link in the description down below if you guys want to check it out. Uh, but it's slightly modified, a little bit easier. Um, so you do need the steamed cauliflower. So this is like just about a cup, maybe just over a cup of steamed cauliflower. And then another thing you want to do to prepare for making this sauce is to actually soak some cashews. So these are just like raw, unsalted cashews. And then I just soaked them in hot water for about 30 minutes. That's all it takes. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot, this is a third of a cup of cashews, and that's before they were soaked. They probably swell up a little bit, so it's probably a little bit more now. But uh, I will put this recipe in the description box down below for you guys. So this is gonna be a blended sauce, so you're gonna need a blender. I'm just gonna use the little Nutribullet for this. It should be more than powerful enough. So we'll add the cup of steamed cauliflower, third of a cup of the soaked cashews, and then the juice from half or a full lemon if you want it to be you know, a little bit more tangy. So many lemon seeds. Two lemon seeds. <laughs> two to two and a half teaspoons of garlic powder. I made it with three the first time, but it was a little bit much. So <laughs> somewhere between two and three is probably good. There's two and I'll just add a little bit more. 
two teaspoons of onion powder. So one of the reasons why I like to use garlic powder and onion powder is that they have a really like deep flavor. It's almost like cooked onion and cooked garlic. So if I was just to throw like raw onion and raw garlic in here, it would still probably be really good, but it would definitely have a different flavor. But go ahead and try it if you guys want. Let me know how it works out. Half a teaspoon of salt is obviously optional if you don't want to add it. You don't have to. And then about the same of black pepper, about a half a teaspoon or so. And then one cup of unsweetened soy milk. If you want it to be really thick, use less. If you want it to be thinner, use more. I used two thirds of a cup the first time and it was a little bit too thick. So I think just under a cup will be perfect. And that's it. Just blend it up. All right, so it definitely turned out nicely. It's like really creamy, nice and thick, but uh, what matters most is how it tastes, obviously. Let's try it out. Oh yeah, mm, yeah, it's good. I mean, not that Alfredo-y, but it's like really nice and like rich and creamy and super tasty, my goodness. All right, so actually what I'm gonna do is to put the pasta back into the pot and with the sauce and heat it all back up again. I'm gonna add a few handfuls of spinach and it's gonna wilt down really nicely and be really easy to eat. You guys know I like to try and have some greens with each of my meals and this is like a really good way to get a bunch of them in. All right, so it's all ready to go. Um, I added a few extra things, obviously some hot sauce on top, got some pea shoots, some per red cabbage and some red bell pepper as well. Isn't that amazing that those two are the same colors? Crazy. So I better get into it, try it out. I know that I overcooked the pasta a little bit just because, you know, when I'm filming, like sometimes I just lose track of time, things overcook, so that happens. So ignore the fact that the pasta is overcooked. Don't do that yourself, or pasta if you call it that. I know you guys are gonna say that in the comments. Mmm, but it's good though. Mmm, yeah. All right, so I think that's probably it for this video. I'm gonna go and enjoy this dinner, but first I have to make Crystal a bowl, because I've got a little bit of leftovers here for her. She needs to eat as well, believe it or not. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really hope you got something out of it. You guys know the idea with these videos is to inspire you, motivate you to move your body a little more, to eat a little bit healthier, and hopefully give you some ideas on recipes that you can be making at home. So if I helped you with any of that, definitely leave a like, subscribe, so you can see more from me, and comment down below, let me know what you thought of the day, and I will see you guys soon with another video. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, and you guys might have noticed that I put some vines up above the cupboards here. So I was just trying to, you know, add a little spice to the kitchen, make it look a little better. I don't know if you've seen pickup lines in this kitchen, but they've got like vines all over the place and it looks amazing. So, you know, I was trying to give it a little bit of that flavor, but it more just looks like I like picked up some weeds from the back and put them up there, but hey, whatever. We'll see if it grows. It doesn't get much light up there anyways. Anyways, thanks again for watching, guys. See you soon.